from the beginning. Um, a lot of our fans, um, especially guys uh, coming from mid majors in the Big West, uh, I played at UC Davis, so I kind of understand uh, the opportunity or the lack of opportunity there is to be seen. And uh, this is an opportunity for our fans to get to know you. And, and once you, when you reach the highest level, they can just come to this interview and you know really get to, to know the, the you at this time. Obviously, we're growing and we want to you know achieve our goals, but. This be a good baseline, especially during the coronavirus, man. So let's break it down to the beginning. Um, where'd you go to high school? Um, I went to Inglewood High School. Um, I actually started out at King Drew High School. Okay. Two years and then transferred my mid through my second season to Inglewood High and spent my last two years there. Why did you transfer? Um, just wasn't too much was going on behind the scenes with my high school team. I felt like this for me trying to get to the next level. That going to Inglewood was the best choice for me. So you guys played, uh, you played your games where the Drews, Drew plays their games? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. I, I'm familiar with the area. I went to church on, on Central, right by the, uh, some, I forgot what the park is called. Um, literally right right by over there. So I uh, understand. It's a, it's a big core. Was that adjustment? You know, coming from like middle school to uh, playing on a big core like this? NBA size. Kind of, but I mean, I was used to playing there already. I came in there kind of early to coach by me and just to get ready, so I was kind of used to it. Um, I just felt like maybe at that age, I was a little mature than a lot of kids my age, so I felt like I had a little advantage coming into it, but I felt pretty comfortable with that court. Cool, cool. And then you transferred to Inglewood. That, that's the city you're from, right? Yes. Cool. Um, how was your experience playing at Inglewood? Um, Inglewood had its, I mean, Inglewood is Inglewood. Like, you feel me, you're in the hood, you never know what you're going to get just going to school. Me, I was catching the bus every day, so you never know what, what to expect in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty cool, though. Yeah. I mean, you learned a lot being in Inglewood. I feel like it definitely helped me grow as a person. Yeah, learn a lot on and off the court, yeah. uh, definitely. Um, personal story, obviously not to talk about myself, but... Um, our next one is we have a different perspective. We're four players, five players, and their fans. And our different perspective is, you know, everyone within our network has some ties to the game of basketball and, and has played. And uh, I, I guess it's a chance for me to brag a little bit. I had a chance to play against Inglewood for a CIF championship. Uh, when's the last time Inglewood got a championship, CIF? I'm honestly, oh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Because it wasn't 09, because yeah. we took it from them. Uh, shout out to, <laughs> to, to Sean. Um, Gomez, Go Go, uh, Man Man, um, Big Deshaun as well, um, and uh, I think me and Anthony Brown, at least Dub, early uh, we blew them out. Crowd fans leaving early. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, Deshaun Gomez, uh, Terrell's uh, older brother, and uh, Man Man, uh, little point guard, um, and then Big uh, Deshaun that went to uh, Iona. Um, I think they both went down right, right out of Inglewood. Um, but I understand, man. It got me hyped because we played our, our CF game at Modern Day. And uh, the band was going. The environment was different. Yeah, you know, I, I went to Ocean View. Not a lot of people know what that is. But when they think of Ocean View, they think of, you know, lack of better terms. So, some white dudes. Yeah, for sure. And it was, obviously, it was not the, not the case. But um, obviously, back to you. So after Inglewood, um, so how, how was the recruiting season? Like, who did you play with uh, for AAU? Um, Pangos Elite, and then I want to say I can't all stars for a little bit too before that, but I ended up last year the high school was with um Pangos Elite for the most part for, for, with Dinos, yeah. So you're traveling, you're playing against the best comp, yeah. Dinos takes care of his guys, I'm a big fan of what he does. All right, cool. So, uh, let's talk about recruitment who's you know recruiting you, who what happened, you know, um, what, what's, your, what's your story? Fresh out of high school, it was just like maybe. Couple of school like I would get, I was getting interest, but never really nothing. Contact coaches disappeared. It was kind of wasn't too not the best recruitment you would say. Yeah. So I was getting a lot of JUCO calls first out of high school. Not really too many universities calling me, so it was kind of difficult. Did you get a chance to play any elite camps? Um, no, I did not. Mm -hmm. I might actually I played in Pangos and uh, I think another one. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, and then after that, um, obviously you said JCs are calling you. What, that, what made you decide to go to Cerritos? Um, actually, I went to prep school first. Oh, okay. Why well, yeah. prep school? So, um, uh, upon my little, it was kind of the bleak recruitment. Mm -hmm. I got a call about a prep school local in the area in the IE. And I was just like, like he broke it down to me, everything about what prep school is, how to help me get to that next level. And I was like, it's a no-brainer for me. Yeah. yeah. What was that recruitment like? Like. I, 
For me, I would say I was a tweener as well. I had recruitment from, let's just say, Pac-12, ACC, all the way to the Big West. So either like I'm gonna be a major role player at the highest level or maybe be someone that they can build around at the lower level. Um, why do you think your, your recruitment wasn't as expected? Um, just cause my, I want to say my work and eth- my work ethic mm-hmm. didn't really develop till later, later. So I feel like I wasn't really too serious about basketball. I was like, when the guy, like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I feel like I deserve, like I was entitled, but I mean, again, you got to work in this game. And I felt like I didn't put enough work at that age for me to have that type of recruitment that I thought I needed or wanted. That's cool. Hey, self-awareness. Well, I like to say self-awareness is a superpower, man. So, you know, it takes a lot to, to recognize that and, and want to improve. So what was the biggest lesson you learned at the prep level? Um, you just got to work. Like, consistency is everything. Yeah. And with professionals and college coaches, that's what they want. They want a guy who do things every day, every 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 game. They give the same thing, if not more, every game. So that was my biggest thing coming into prep school and just knowing that you got to work for everything that's in given. Awesome. I'm sure you you uh, took that mentality obviously to JUCO. You know, there's like a national saying, JUCO product. You know, saying that you know guys that go that route obviously are no handouts. They got it out the mud, and and obviously it's everyone's trying to get to the next level. So it's tough with politics and everyone you know not playing selfishly because you know if you don't perform, how are you going to go to the next level? You know. So how was it like at Cerritos? Like, what was your your one year one year there, right? Yeah. Actually, most people don't know though. I went. D2 first before that. Oh, so, see, yeah. this is what we doing, man. So, what, what happened? Yeah. So I went to Cal State San Bernardino out of prep. I had, a, like, basically every D2 in California was after me. Mm-hmm. You know, being from the city, you kind of like, oh, they shine on guys who don't go to D1. But I'm like, hey, I still get to play basketball. Mm-hmm. So I ended up signing there at Cal State San Bernardino. Um, ended up not playing red shirt and it was like, maybe, like, maybe this not for me. Maybe I should chase that. I had a dream to chase a Division One scholarship, yeah. and I felt like my skills. That this when my work ethic started to, to develop really. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe I could do something more if I keep working. Maybe I could get something better. I, I watched Division Two guys. No offense, but it's good basketball. No, like, of I'm course, yeah, that's what but we I do. But I was just yeah. like, maybe I want to just like, have that, that that aspiration to get a Division One scholarship. So I ended up going to Juco at Cerritos. Dang. That's, that's why, yeah, again, a lot of people d- didn't know that. Um, obviously, with your work ethic, you have an athletic, you're athletic, you have NBA size, um, and you've played at obviously multiple levels of high school, um, prep, JUCO, now D1. Uh, have you ever posterized on somebody? And if so, uh, can you give us a play by play of what happened? Um, any of them or? Any, anything come to memory, man. Man, I'm gonna go with. St. Mary's. So oh, I remember that one. Yeah, the, set, the um, atmosphere was already crazy. And the out of bounds play we ran really wasn't even supposed to be like how it, how it happened. So mm-hmm. I ended up getting like a, a pass over here. My defender, he tried to front me and he ended up going for it, but he missed. Mm-hmm. And I seen the lane and I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. I ended up, I don't know who the who the guy was, but I ended up like elbowing the Yeah, he was covering the space. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Crazy. I saw that play. And, like, to see their fans, they wanted to get hyped, but of course they're at home, so they yeah. it, it was they couldn't show too much love. But it was crazy just to start the game out like that. Yeah, the atmosphere in Moraga is, is crazy, man. It's a small school, but you know, if you know, you know. Like, I played there. I went to. I played at University of San Francisco, so they're on a conference and. You know, I played with the Delhi era and Mickey McConnell and, and all those guys. So you know, those fans have always been been nuts, man. Wanna feel a thrust? Wanna feel a test? Wanna feel a drop top breeze? Wanna feel success? Wanna chase a guy? Never chase a message. Never never stop crying.